Hello, uh, I'm Director, and this video will serve as a sort of introduction to my tutorial series for Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Chaos Theory Any%. Percent. Um, I'm going to divide this video into separate chapters so you can see exactly what I'm talking about, and I'll make sure to cover the most important details as well as the uh, mostly used strats. And hopefully, by the end of this video, you'll be able to understand everything there is to know before you can dive into the actual levels. And um, yeah, so without any further ado, let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is loadouts. So whenever you start a level, you'll have the loadout option. And for the most part, you'll have three different options. You have Rudding's Recommendation, you have Stealth, and you have Assault. The way you can tell from within the game um, which option you have is if you load in in the game, for example, here. In the bottom right, you see 30 and then slash 60. So if it's 30 slash 60, um, then it means you have Redding. If it's 30 slash 30, then it means you have Stealth. And if it's 30 slash 90, I think. Let me just double check on that. Um, then you have Assault, yeah. But um, as far as loadouts go, for the most part, you're gonna be using Redding's recommendation here, um, mainly because it's the fastest to go through in this menu, it's just, you know, the least amount of inputs required to get it. Um, there are gonna be a few levels, namely um, Displace, Battery, Bathhouse, and I think Kokobo where you're going to use stealth because of its benefits or things that it has that we need for the route. Um, but again, I'm going to always articulate these changes and these selections before each of the level. And just know that you will never, ever, 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 ever use assault. Never. We never use assault. Uh, it's not really needed for any of the levels, so you can just immediately forget that, um, and uh, yeah, so this is um, loadout selection, and uh, everything you need to know about loadouts. Oh, and to quickly navigate the loadouts um, menu, um, say you have the level load here, right, you're going to press space until you see this, then you're going to press tab to select the loadout button then you're going to press space again and then you're going to do the selection you want with your WASD keys so for example I want to choose stealth here I'm going to press tab again to select the accept button and I'm going to press space so in full speed it looks like this all right I'm just it's barely visible on, on screen, but just uh, take a look at my inputs, at my input viewer. I'm going to do this, 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 and then I have my stealth loadout that I can use wherever I want. The next thing I want to talk about is computers. Now, there are going to be quite a few objectives that you'll have to do throughout the speed run where you'll have to tap into the computers physically by approaching them, selecting use computer, and then immediately closing the UI that pops up. And you can do this quickly by spamming the crouch key. For me, it's C. So like this. Um, and you'll be able to pass these objectives. For the speed run, it is actually sufficient to simply access the computer and then close the menu immediately like so. You don't have to press anything from within the, the, the UI that pops up. There is one, I think one exception, which is the bank level at the very end, but I'll be sure to mention that in the levels tutorial. But for the most part, as in 99% of the time, you'll just have to open the computer prompt and then exit like so. However, there's one thing that I want to mention with computers, and that is also the first strat that I'll talk about here, and that is fast PC interaction. Now, you may have noticed that, for, for example here, 
if I access this computer, there is a brief amount of time where I see the UI and I'm spamming the crouch key, but I can't exit out of this computer screen for some reason. And uh, here, as you can see, it appears and then I spam the crouch key, but I can't exit immediately. And this can actually be avoided by simply having your night vision or your thermal vision or whatever this vision is turned on. Because as you'll see here, I have my night vision turned on. I'm gonna do the same use computer prompt and I'm gonna spam the crouch key. And you'll be able to see just how fast I can exit out of that UI. It's almost instant. Um, it's in some cases you can even do it frame perfectly. Oops, there you go. Uh, you can do, even do it frame perfectly if you're fast enough, like that, for example. And this saves a lot of time, so make sure you don't forget to have your goggles turned on when you're accessing computers. This, by the way, doesn't affect the objectives where you tap into computers remotely. For some reason, it only affects the the difference is only there if you tap into the computer physically like so. Um, so again, don't forget to do this, and you'll be saving quite some time with these objectives. The next thing I want to talk about is the one speed slowdown technique, which allows us to pass through um, guards without being heard. For this thing, you'll need to have a separate bind for slowing down by one speed, and you can find it here on zoom out slash decelerate bind. I have it as F, you can put it as whatever you want. For me, it's F, it's very convenient. And uh, basically, if you slow down by one speed, you'll be able to run around past um, guards like here. Uh, well, this is a bad example, but here I can show you a better one. Um, in battery, we pass through these um, guards here who are sleeping. Now, if I were to simply run full speed, they would hear me, right? And I'm dead. But if you slow down by just one speed level, so as you can see, I'm pressing F, and I'm just gonna run forward, they don't hear me. And we use this quite a few times in the speed run. I'll be sure to point it out when that happens. Um, it's very neat because you don't slow down that much and you can just um, walk around without being heard. Um, it's sort of like crouch spamming in the earlier Splinter Cell games, but here we just have to slow down by one speed and you're good to go. One thing to keep in mind is that it, this only works if you're walking one direction at a time. So for example, as you can see, I'm only holding W here, right? Or I can hold D, I can also hold A, I can also hold S, but never two directions at once. So don't run like this diagonally because for some reason it doesn't work if you do this diagonally. Like here, I'm, I'm gonna use a W and D and you'll see how these guards will immediately hear me. So make sure to do this and walk only either forward or sideways, but never diagonally. And um, yeah, you should be good to go. Another very important thing is the scroll mouse wheel interaction. And this is very useful for interacting with things at the first possible frame. Um, it lets you do interrogations almost frame perfectly, very, very quick. And um, it's the same as in, for example, uh, Splinter Cell 1 or Pandora Tomorrow. It works the same way. However, there is one little thing that you have to be aware. Mm, actually, okay, two. So the first one is that by default, it's bound to um, zoom out or decelerating. So for this, I just put my bind as whatever I wanted to, as I explained in the movement uh, technique part, but you can't bind anything to the mouse wheel from within the game. So for example, if I go here and I want to say, hey, I'm gonna use also my mouse wheel to decelerate. Well, I can't really do that because the game just doesn't react to it for some reason. And the way you actually bind something to the mouse wheel is like this. So the way you do this is by going to 
um, the file explorer and here you want to type in percent program data one word and then also percent so it looks like this then you hit enter you're going to be put into this uh, program data folder or you can just go to local disk C and then program data and here you'll you, you'll want to find Ubisoft chaos theory profiles and then select the profile you will want to do the speed run with I have your speed runs profile and then you want to open this dot any source file from here you'll want to uh, scroll down a little until you see these uh, binds here so as you can see we have mouse wheel down right for you it's gonna be um, what is it called here uh, zoom out it's just gonna be zoom out probably here um, because um, that's what it's called in these settings or whatever or maybe it's gonna be called something else but you wanna select either mouse wheel up or mouse wheel down and delete the bind there whatever you, whatever it is and type in interaction with a capital I in the beginning and then hit save now what this will do is it'll change the bind in game to be that whenever you scroll your mouse you'll have the interaction bind to it um, and keep in mind you can have multiple um, binds for each action so for example I have interaction on both mouse wheel and space um, I don't re I don't recall if I use space at all but just in case I like to have it as a second option and um, you can also uh, for this thing here uh, while we're in this menu you can also rebind um, quick save and quick load because I don't think you can do it from within the game either maybe you can but um, if you want you can do this from from this uh, file as well as you can see uh, by default it's probably going to be like um, quick save f5 and then quick load f8 right just gonna get these um, it's going to be f5 f8 right so you can just take this quick save thing just cut it out and paste it on whatever you want for example I have it on four um, it's gonna put this here um, and then I have my quick load bind set to six. So, you know, whenever I want to do quick save, quick loading, I just have to press four, six instead of F5 and F8, which is really um, inconvenient. And um, yeah, so you can basically do any control change from within this file if that's more convenient to you. But for the most part, you can also do a lot of stuff from the game controls settings page as well. And to show you how it works in game, uh, for example, here we have this door. I'm just going to scroll down, and, the, and Sam's going to open it immediately. And uh, the reason why it's really useful is because um, when you're pressing space, there's going to be a, a bit of a like a very, very, very tiny waiting period before you can actually go through with the input. So, as you can see, um, you can compare this, and then you can compare. Oh, sorry, you can compare this where it's like almost instant. Um, and uh, as I said, it's really visible with um, with interrogations. So let me just show you here. In the soul level, you'll have to interrogate one of the guys here. So let me just show you here. Um, whatever here. So I'm just going to approach this guy, right? And then here, normally I would have to be like... Like this, right? But you can just do this. Or you can even do like faster if you want. You want to tell me what so I mean for some parts it is more you know more visible it's especially visible if you have the unlockable mouse wheel um, that just goes by in just light speed but uh, for me it's uh, only a bit faster I think 
And it doesn't require you to like go like this. We have to wait. You know, so. Yeah. And it's also very useful in hacking. Now, what kind of hacking I'm talking about? Well, there are going to be certain sections, especially in this place here, for example, where you have to brute force um, access to certain objectives. So, for example, here, uh, I'm going to scan this. Um, briefcase and there's this uh, security access that I have to pass and if you just simply press space to access it and then just scroll down with your mouse wheel you can see how fast I'm brute forcing this uh, this hack and uh, that just saves a bunch of time here um, another example of this would be for example here the retinal scanner hack you can also just brute force it like that, and uh, it's so much faster and saves so much time here. Um, and um, yeah, that's why you also want the scroll interaction. Um, and I guess this is also a good uh, tutorial on how to brute force hack stuff. You just scroll your mouse wheel down, or whatever you have your interaction bind set to. You spam it all the way through, and that's your um, that's your hacking. And lastly, I want to talk about inventory. Now, this is the most important thing you'll be interacting with constantly throughout the run. So it's uh, very, very important that you get accustomed to, you know, navigating it quickly. The quickest way to do this is uh, by using WASD. Or you can use arrow keys alternatively if you want to. But, I mean, it's mostly convenient with uh, the same keys that you move with. And... Um, yeah, you can just navigate it like that. It also works the same way for attachments as well. You can navigate into attachments really quickly. Yeah, just have a bit of practice with navigating this inventory like that. Um, you can also, you know, quickly cut to the to the other side like this if you want to, if you need to. And um, one thing that is really important is to, you know, time it well, be able to select stuff quickly. So, for example, just a very quick example here. Imagine I need to walk over there, and then I need to switch to my uh, to my uh, flash grenade, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna move um, here, and then I'm gonna go and uh, do it like this, for example. Or I can just be like, oh, you know, you know, I need my sticky shockers here, or my uh, sticky camera here. I can just quickly navigate navigate the inventory like that, and um, it's very efficient that way to be able to to do it like that. Also very important um, to access your special attachment, for example in Penthouse, um, you press Alt and you will see Sam do this little animation and then you'll have the sniper that you can use. Uh, the attachment only works when you zoom in, so even if I have the sniper I can shoot around normally, but if I zoom in uh, it's, um, it's the sniper thing, so just be very careful about that. Um, also very important is that if you have your special attachment, you can't use the sticky shockers, you can't use airfoil rounds, etc. Um, and to access them, you have to, again, take it off. I'm going to do a bit of an animation here. And only then you can select attachments, like so. Also, try to always select sticky shockers and all these nice things for SE20K without having it equipped, because then it'll be instant. If you do this with your weapon drawn, you'll see that there's a brief time where you can't shoot um, and it takes a bit longer to, to change. So make sure it's always from within the menu like that and without having your weapon equipped. And to finish things off, there is a very neat feature that we use a couple of times in the run, which is um, the recently used slots for your um, inventory. So for example, uh, if I have my uh, SC20K here, and I'm going to switch to my smoke grenade, I can uh, switch very quickly between my last two used items, which would be, of course, smoke grenade and SC20K, uh, by simply pressing the inventory key. For me, it's control. So instead of holding it, I'm just going to press it, and the game will automatically 
equip my last used item before the smoke grenade. And if I want to switch back to my smoke grenade, I press it again. And these are my last two used items. Um, let's say I, I'm, I'm going to have flash grenade and pistol, right? Then I can switch between these two uh, with a press of a button. I don't have to navigate it through the menu itself. I can just press it and be on my way. Um, the same way it works for attachments as well. So here I have sticky shocker and sticky camera. I can also, also the same way I can um, switch between these attachments um, with a press of a button and I don't have to do anything at all. And that's everything you need to know about Chaos Theory before delving into the levels themselves. If you have any further questions, please let me know in the comments or you can join our Splinter Cell Speedrunning Discord where we're more than happy to answer any and all of your questions. Until then, thank you and have fun speedrunning.